Yeah. How's everybody? Good, thank you. Perfect. Good. Good, good. So we're going to do a gentle one tonight. I'm more lying down on the mat. Stretching out, yes. If you've got any um, like pillows or um, anything handy, I mean, I, I do sometimes use a bolster, which I've got. If you've got anything like that, that you can perhaps grab, it just sometimes makes your practice a little bit more comfortable. So you just that pillow off the sofa, perfect. <laughs> That's it, nice. Lovely. Oh, and loads of you. Hello, all. Hello, 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 hello. Right, okay. So, when, uh, it's, it's 5.30 now. So, shall I get cracking? I assume so. Um, we may give it just one more minute, just because I've still got people joining. So, we'll just give it... Oh, okay. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and, yeah, do you want to just talk about how the session may benefit runners? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, so obviously we're doing this to celebrate uh, Running Bears 30 years. Congratulations. Um, the session tonight, we're going to work into your hamstrings and your hips predominantly. But I also do a little bit of stretching out for the upper body because with running, you tend to move in one plane of motion. There's not a lot of external rotation in the hips and into the shoulders. And sometimes, particularly if you've got a day job where you sit at a desk as well, we can get quite round-shouldered and, um, and feel stress in the back. So we're going to do a little bit of work into that as well. So it's um, just a, we'll do about half an hour practice um, and just stretch out a few areas that you'll probably find useful for your running. Um, often yoga can be used to help prevent injury as much as flexibility. Um, I, there was one lady that I think you all know that, um, that works at Running Bear and um, she, um, she did find, Carol, she did find that um, her speed improved when she did more yoga so that was uh, that was really helpful for her so um, there's just lots of benefits and one of the most important benefits of yoga is the um, is the mindfulness so if you are able to calm um, your mind and move your thoughts inwards and not constantly be distracted by the outside world it really helps you to focus perhaps on your practice focus on your running um, it just helps you generally in life so when um, Jordana says we can go, are we ready to go now? Oh, all done. There we go. I've got the all. Yeah. Right. Okay. Up. So let's start onto our mats. If you've got a, if you've got something that you can use, we might need it later, but it's not, it's not imperative. Okay. So I'm going to draw you down onto the mat to start with. So releasing the soles of the feet towards each other. Let's just make a nice diamond shape out with the legs. So just help me to open up to the hips to start with. Just bring the spine down onto the mat. Now your options with your hands are to bring the hands down by the side of you with the palms facing up. Or if you prefer to work, work a little bit deeper or open up in a little bit stronger way, you release the arms overhead and just grab alternate wrists or elbows. Just allow everything just to relax down onto the mat. So now just close your eyes. And just bringing your focus inwards. Just take a nice deep inhale in, draw that air in through the nose. And then exhale, sigh it away. Inhale, breathing deeply. Exhale, release. So now just clearing the thoughts that clutter up the mind. Just try and lengthen out through each breath. And if you feel your mind wondering, just bring your attention onto your breath. So as we inhale, we just feel the air into the body expanding through the lungs and through the intercostal muscles and the ribs. And as we exhale, you just let everything relax down to the mat. Just allow gravity to lower the shoulder blades down and the knees down. Again, inhale nice and deeply. Inhale, draw that in. 
exhale, release. Now slowly starting to straighten out through the arms. Let's draw the knees back towards each other and just straighten out through the legs. So you're going to point the toes, point the fingers, you have a really deep, big body stretch. Then gradually walking the backs of the hands over towards the right side of the mat and walk the feet over to the right side of the mat. So if you looked at you from above, you'd look like a big banana. You're going to grab the left wrist, cross the left ankle over the right, you're really stretching out to the side waist. So you're trying to release the entire shoulder girdle down on the mat. And you can keep the eyes closed if you prefer, or just gaze up towards the ceiling. You want a nice deep stretch going all the way from the left foot, all the way up to the left wrist. Now slowly releasing that left foot, let's draw and lengthen, stretch out in the middle. So really just take a neutral stretch for the spine. Then walking the legs over to the left, let's walk the hands over to the right. This time grabbing the right wrist with the left hand and crossing the right ankle over the left knee. Just roll that right shoulder blade down onto the mat. Feel a nice deep stretch, go all the way from the right wrist down to the right ankle. Okay, let's slowly draw that back through center. Draw the legs back. Now bringing the arms in, let's walk the feet up the mat, bring the knees into the chest, just give them a nice big hook. Let's have a little roll around on the lumbar spine. So you're just releasing any tension that you might feel into the back. Now planting the feet down onto the mat. You want to make sure the feet are around hip distance apart. You can just about touch the heels with your fingertips. Round the palms of the hands down into your mat. Let's push into the heels, use the glute muscles, lift the hips up. So you start to feel a stretch out through the quadriceps and through the hip flexor muscles. So you're engaging the heels into the mat, using the glute muscles to lift the hips higher. So you only need to lift them as high as you start to feel the stretch down in front of the legs. Try and keep the neck steady. Just keep the gaze up towards the ceiling. Now ground you down to the left heel. Let's lift the right leg up, keeping the right knee bent. You're going to release the right ankle onto the left thigh, flex out to the right foot, and then just let that left, that right knee just roll out to the side. So you're making like a figure of four with the legs. The hips are still lifted up. You're pushing into the left heel, engaging the left glute. You might feel a deeper opening up to the outside edge of that right hip. Now grounding down through the palms of the hands, let's gently start to wheel the spine one vertebrae at a time down to the mat. Taking the hands around the back of that left thigh. Lift and straighten out through the left leg, lifting the sole of the foot up towards the ceiling. But leave that right knee just rolling out to the side. So you're still making a figure of four with the legs. We're starting to stretch out now through that left hamstring. So the straighter you get the leg, the bigger the hamstring stretch. So if you straighten out through the leg, you're engaging the hamstring muscles equally through the length of the muscle or muscles. Now just inching that left leg slightly away, let's just release the right foot back down to the mat. We're going to straighten out through the right leg, just point the right toes. Leave that left leg up in the sky. You can either still grab behind the thigh, or perhaps you might want to grab behind the calf, or you can take the piece fingers to the big toes. So still lengthening out through that left leg. You may prefer to draw your right hand onto your right hip just to keep stability in the right side. You're just taking this hamstring stretch a little bit further. With each inhale, lengthen out through the back of the neck, releasing the spine down to the mat. And with each exhale, just see if that left leg wants to draw a little bit further towards you. Now 
Now slowly releasing whichever clasp you've got onto the leg. Let's draw both knees into the chest again. Just push the lumbar spine down into the mat and draw the heels in towards the bottom. Now replanting the feet down onto the mat. Plant the hands down, let's inhale, lift the hips up so we're bringing ourselves back into our bridge posture. The feet are around hip distance apart, you should be able to just about touch the heels. You should be using the glute muscles, pushing out through the heels and lifting the hips up just to have another further stretch down the front of the legs. Now pressing down through the palms of the hands. Let's draw the left leg up this time and you're going to make a figure of four with the left leg. So you allow the left knee to roll out to the side, flex through the left foot, rest that left ankle on top of the right thigh. Again, keep the neck steady, engage the right glute, push out to the right heel. And then slowly wheeling the spine down towards the mat, just one vertebrae at a time. Leave that left leg in the figure of four, wrap behind the right thigh, lift the right leg up towards the ceiling, flex out through the right toes, so you're drawing the right toes back towards the face, pushing the heel up. So you feel an opening up through the outside edge of the left hip, an opening up through the right hamstrings. Now slowly releasing the, left, the right leg slightly, let's release the left leg to the mat. Lengthen that left leg away, just point the left toes. You can carry on grabbing behind that right thigh, perhaps right behind the right calf, or again take the peace fingers to the big toes. I'm using my left hand onto my left thigh just to support the left side. Let's see if you can draw the heel up towards the ceiling. Now inhale, drawing the air in, clearing the mind. Exhale, just see if you can draw that right leg in a little further. Inhaling. Exhale, just release that tension away. Last one, inhale, draw that in. Exhaling, release that out. Now, re-bending both knees. Let's release the grasp you have on the leg. Bring both knees into the chest. Just taking the right hand into the, onto the right knee and the left hand onto the left knee. Just draw the legs out in a big circle. So you're taking the knees to the outside edge of the mat. And then exhaling, drawing them back through centre, pushing the lumbar spine down. Inhale, release the legs out, make a nice big circle. Exhale and draw your knees back through the chest. Let's do one more. Inhale and draw that out. Exhale, releasing that back. Now grabbing behind the backs of the thighs, we're just going to gently start to rock forward and backwards on the spine. So you're just pushing the spine down into the mat, gently rocking forward and back. And then eventually we're going to rock all the way up into seated. Perfect. Nice. So straightening out the legs. If you've got particularly tight hamstrings, an option to help you gradually increase the flexibility is to grab the hands behind the back of the legs, keep the chest engaged, and just slowly start to inch the legs away, keeping that chest engagement onto the thighs. For those of you who want to take a deeper hamstring stretch, you might find it's just efficient to flex out through the feet, draw the back of the knees down into the mat, engage the quadriceps, sit forward of the sit bones. So then teeping the fingers down by the side of the legs, and just inhaling, gaze forward. And as you exhale, draw the thigh bones inside the hip sockets and just see if you can draw the chest a little bit further towards the back. Inhaling, gazing forward, and then exhaling, releasing down. So again, that analogy of just drawing the thigh bones inside of the hips just helps you fold down a little bit further. And as you fold down, try and keep the gaze towards the ankles or the shins. 
So the purpose of our full Paschimottanasana forward fold is to lengthen out through the upper body as well as the lower body. So you're bringing length to the back and all the muscles in the back. So just have a couple more breaths here, inhaling, exhaling, just releasing that tension away. Inhale, think length, exhale, release down. Now slowly taping the hands back, let's draw the hands back to centre. We're just going to release the legs over to the left and bring ourselves up into our tabletop. So if you feel any tension in the spine, it's quite nice to mobilize through the spine. Inhale, dip the spine down, tip the tailbone up towards the sky. As you exhale, let's just round the spine and tuck the head. Inhale, gazing forward, dip the spine down. Exhale, round. Let's slowly bring that back to the neutral spine. Walking the hands back now, you're going to release the bottom onto the heels. So if you've got, if you find this particularly tricky, you can bring your uh, prop in and sit onto your prop. So we're just going to stretch out through the front of the ankles. So for some of you, this might be quite strong. So place the hands down by the side of you, your fingertips facing forward. We're just going to lift the knees off the mat, so stretching out through the front of the ankles. Okay, so if that's okay here, you can perhaps release the hands a little bit further behind you. If that's okay, perhaps you can release down onto the elbow. So you just want to feel a stretch across the front of the ankles. For some of you, just sitting onto the heels will be sufficient. So just take the posture that suits you. Just take a couple of breaths here, allowing the front of the ankles to stretch out. Exhale, release out any pain. Now drawing the hands back onto the mat, for those of you folding all the way down, let's draw the hands down by the side of the knees. We're going to draw and tuck the toes and sit onto the heels. So we're now mobilising through the toe joints. Inhaling, sweeping the arms up to the sky. Interlace the fingers, just turn the palms away. Pushing out through the palms, lengthen the triceps up by the ears. And then slowly twisting the torso over and gaze towards your right wall. Gently draw it back through centre, push out through the hands and then slowly gaze towards the left wall. Excellent. Bringing that back through centre. Let's push up through the hands. That's it. Now gently releasing the hands. Let's draw the hands out in front of us and just tap out with the feet. Perfect. So just bringing some Stretching into the top of the shoulders, bring the hands out, mat width apart, tip the tailbone up, and then you're just going to melt the heart down towards the mat. So try and walk the hands out. So you're walking the hands to the corner edges of your mat, you're stacking the hips over the knees, and just perhaps resting the forehead, or for some of you, you may be able to get the chest all the way down to the mat. And you feel a nice deep stretch go across the top of the shoulders. Again, inhaling here, exhaling, releasing out. Inhaling, exhale, releasing down. So let's slowly start to walk the hands back. Let's meet back into our tabletop. From here, we're gonna bring the right leg all the way forward. So starting from the outside edge of the mat, you want to have both hands on the inside of that right foot. You're going to have the right heel onto the mat and possibly the right toes onto the floor by the side of it. Just have a gentle rock round on the outside edge of the foot. So you're rolling that right knee out to the side. So you're feeling it into the right hip socket. That's it, nice. Just have a little bit of movement. So you just, the movement's really just to see how your body's feeling tonight. So if you feel that's okay, and that is, I'll just bring my prop in so I can show you, and you'd like to take it a little bit further, you can perhaps opt to rest down the elbows onto a prop, 
or you can perhaps opt to rest down with the elbows onto the floor. So you're sinking into the left hip flexor, opening up to the left hip flexor, but you're also opening up to the right hip. So you're still rolling onto the outside edge of that right foot. This is a winged dragon pose for anyone who's interested. So it's helping open up through the hips, just bring a little bit of mobility. And if movement's good for you, just take that movement to the little gentle sway side to side like I'm doing. Helps you into the pose. So for those of you who've released down, let's gradually start to draw the hands back onto the mat. Let's just walk that right foot in. So this time you're gonna take a nice deep lunge. So you're gonna take the right hand on the outside edge of that right foot, left hand down on the mat by the side of it. Just sink the hips down. So you really try to lengthen out through that left hip flexor. Just perhaps walking the right foot slightly forward and sink down a little further. So again, there's the option just to stay here, if you prefer. Well, there is the option to bring the right arm on the inside of that right leg. Make sure the right foot's now trapping forward and then release down onto either a prop or onto your elbows, whichever you prefer. So it's like your deepest variation of a lunge. Nice stretch. Again, keeping the breath nice and long. Each inhalation around the count of three. And with each exhalation, you just let everything release down. Now, taking the gaze up. For those of you who've released down onto a prop or onto your elbows, let's bring the hands back onto the mat. And lastly, we're going to release that right foot all the way over to the left edge of your mat. So we're going to come into what's known as a pigeon pose. So ideally, your right fat as shin is parallel with the front of the mat. The reason I say that is to protect the knee joints. For some of you, you might find that your right hip is all the way up here. So that's another good use of your prop. You can bring your prop underneath the right hip, make the right shin parallel with the mat, and just make it a little bit easier in that way. So taking the left hand in front of that right foot, so let's just try and stack the sternum towards that right knee. So we create space by just pushing out through the hands. And as we exhale, we can just slowly perhaps start to bend through the elbows, perhaps rest the elbows down onto the mat, or you can perhaps rest all the way down and draw the chest along that right foot. So just using the weight of the body, so you're releasing deep into the outside edge of that right hip. But you're also rolling the left hip flexor down that towards the mat, so you're still opening up through that left hip flexor. So just have a couple of breaths here. Inhaling. Exhaling, just slowly releasing that down. Now, for those of you who've released down, let's slowly start to push out through the hands. Let's draw the body all the way up. Now, we're going to plant the hands down onto the mat, lift the hips up, draw that right leg back, and we're going to be back onto our tabletop. So what might be nice now is just have a gentle sway side to side of the hips, just release any tension in the hip joints, or perhaps make a big circle. Just make a movement that you feel on your own, so nobody can see what you're doing anywhere, so it's quite nice. Just take whatever movement you need. So we're going to move back to the left side now. So we're going to step the left foot all the way forward. The left heel's onto the mat. The left toes are onto possibly the floor beside it. So before you go deeper into the posture, just have a little gentle roll onto the outside edge of that left foot. Just sink the hips down. Just see how that feels. Just like I'm having a gentle rock side to side here. Or you may find forward and back. Or a little round, going round in a circle movement. Just see whatever suits you tonight. 
So again, you can stay up onto the hands, you could possibly release the elbows down onto a prop, or you can release the elbows down onto the mat. So you want to deepen the posture further. Again, you're just rolling onto the outside edge of that left foot, working deep into that left hip socket, deep into the muscles on the outside. You're also opening up through the groin on the left hand side. Releasing the right hip flexor down towards the mat and opening there too. Try not to carry too much tension in the upper body. Just focus on releasing the tension in the lower body. Just allowing it to sink. My instructor always used to say to me, finding comfort in your discomfort. It's a very good saying, I find. It's worked. So for those of you who've released down, let's gently start to draw the hammers back. Let's slowly draw that right leg back. So option one is just to take the hand to either side of that leg. Just resting the hands down onto the mat, sink the hips down. So you're coming into your deepest variation of the lunge. Or if you want to work slightly deeper into it, you can bring both hands on the inside of that left leg. The left toes are tracking forward now. And you really taps down onto your elbows or onto your bolster. So you're going to feel a really deep opening up through the right hip flexor. You might feel it into the left hamstring. And at any stage you want to deepen the posture, you just walk that left foot a little bit further forward. So for those of you who've released down, let's gradually start to bring the hands back onto the mat. Let's just hinge the hips slightly back so we can get into our pigeon. You're going to draw that left leg over, or the left foot rather, to the out, right side of the mat, and we're going to meet into our pigeon. So gently lower that left hip down towards the mat. If you need the prop underneath the left side of the bottom, just grab it there now. Bringing the hands in front of that left shin. So you're trying to square the left shin towards the short edge of your mat, perhaps flexing out to the left foot. So flexing through the left foot and squaring the shin will just help to protect the knee and ankle joint. Inhaling just creates some space here, and your option just to stay here, you're happy here, or option to lower down onto the elbows, or perhaps lower the chest all the way down. If you're lowering all the way down, try and guide the chest towards that left leg, so you're actually stacking the sternum towards the left knee. We'll just have a few breaths here. It's so easy to let your mind wander in these poses. Just always bring your attention back to your breath. Inhaling deeply. Exhaling, releasing tension out. Inhale, nice deep breath. Exhale, release. Now slowly pushing out through the hands. Let's draw that all the way up and release the chest down. Let's just bring that right leg all the way forward now and meet into our center. So what might be quite nice now, just to release any tension out of the hips, take the hands behind you. You're just going to gently roll the legs over to the right. Feet are out about that width apart. Just gently draw them back through centre and then let's just lower them over to the left. That's it. Nice. Drawing them back through centre. Just plant the feet down hip distance apart. Plant the hands down behind you. The fingers are facing the bottom. We're going to inhale, press out to the feet. Press out through the hands, let's draw the hips up. Keep the neck steady. If there's no problems with the neck, you can release the head down. So you're trying to make a nice table, you feel a stretch out through the tops of the shoulders. Lift the hips, you might feel something into the hip flexors or the front of the quads. And then gently drawing the hips back towards the heels. So you're hinging the hips forward, stretching out through the shoulders a little bit more. And then exhale, releasing the bottom down to the mat. So let's bring the hands onto the back of the legs. 
gently wheel the spine down to more towards the mat. Let's draw the knees into the chest. So I'm just going to finish with a little couple of core things. We're going to release the legs up towards the ceiling. So you're making a nice L shape with the body. Bring the hands onto the belly. Draw the navel into the spine. Engage hip bone to hip bone, transverse abdominals, and also draw it to the pelvic floor. So keeping the hands onto the belly. Option one is to stay here. Option two is to slowly draw one leg down to time until it's six inches off the mat. And option three is to lower both legs at the same time. So it's a nice slow count. So we'll go 10, nine, just feel the, the um, belly under the hands. Eight. Push that lumbar spine down. Seven. Six. Really engage the core. Five. Four. Three. Two. And when we reach one, just draw the knees back into the chest. Bring the arms around the legs, push the lumbar spine down, draw the head up to the knees. And we're going to do that one more time. For those of you who did one leg, clearly try and do the other leg this time. Draw the heels up towards the ceiling, flex out through the feet. Engage the navel into the spine. Try and flatten out through the belly. So you're drawing the spine down towards the mat. Let's lower down. Ten. Keep the gaze up, nine, keep the neck steady, eight, pelvic floor engaged, seven, core strong, six, keep breathing, five, four, three, two, and one. Bring the knees into the chest, keep the knees a hug again, Draw the lumbar spine down into the mat. Now lastly, while the knees are into the chest, push the lumbar spine down, re-engage the core, we're going to draw the head and shoulders up, release the hands down either side of the feet, and see if you can draw the forehead towards the knees. Keeping that head and shoulders released off the mat, we're going to inhale, lengthen the legs away, Exhale, draw them back in. Use the core. Inhale, lengthen, head and shoulders off the mat. Exhale, draw that back. Last one. Inhale, lengthen that way. Exhale, release. Now give the knees a nice big hug. Release the head down. Release the soles of the feet up towards the ceiling now. Widen the knees. Draw the arms in between the legs. You're going to either wrap the hands round and grab hold of the calves from the outside or grab your hands around the top of the feet. Just keep the entire spine engaged down to the back of the, back, back of the pelvis. So you bring yourself into a happy baby pose. You can see why it's named this, because you often see babies in this pose. It's a really nice pose for protecting the lumbar spine. So if you've had, if you had any lower back issues, you just feel a little bit stiff, just rocking out in this pose can really help ease the lumbar spine. At the same time, you're also opening up to the groin, working into the hips. So just have a nice, gentle sway side to side before I finish our practice tonight. Then gently releasing the legs down. Let's cross the right leg over the left. So you're crossing onto the thigh. Some of you may want to double cross, so you bring the foot back round. Let's release the hands out, shoulder height, and allow, allow the legs just to roll over towards the left and just take the gaze right. So you're having a slight twist in the lumbar spine. And keep the right shoulder blade engaged down somehow. Just gently using the core, draw that back to your center. 
let's just uncross the right leg and then cross the left leg over the right this time. Again, double cross if you want to. And just lower the legs over towards the right and just take the gaze left, so you're easing you into the spine, keeping the shoulder blades down on the mat, opening up through the front of the collarbones. Gently drawing that back through centre now. Let's just release and uncross the legs. So we're going to release down into your Shavasana. If anyone's got no back issues in Shavasana, what is a nice option as well is to perhaps bring the bolster underneath the knees, release the feet out around that width apart, or you can just release down onto the mat, feet around mat width apart, toes are rolling out, arms are facing up towards the ceiling. So you're just drawing the shoulder blades down towards the mat by allowing the toes, ankles and knees to roll out. You're just opening up through the hips, through the front of the hips. Just keep that breath nice and long, but try not to control it now. Just taking a nice deep inhale. And then exhaling, just releasing everything down so that's so trying to relax every muscle in your body. Just feel any tension that you're holding, just release down into the mat. The eyes closed. So let's just gently start to bring a little bit of movement back into the body. Let's just start, start by wiggling our toes. Let's perhaps roll out through the ankles. Let's gently start to walk the feet back towards each other. And let's re-engage the soles of the feet onto the mat. And just gradually inch those legs up until so you can bring the knees into the chest. Just stretch out through the fingers and then roll out through the wrists. And then wrapping the arms around the legs, give yourself a lovely big hug. Perhaps even draw the head up to the knees. Giving yourself gratitude. Gently releasing the head down. Let's rock over towards the right. Just resting out in the fetal position for a breath. Now slowly pushing out from your top hand. Let's gradually draw that all the way up into theta. So bring your hands into heart center. And give yourself gratitude for your practice. First, you're giving yourself gratitude for finding time to spend on the mat and finding time to spend on yourself. Giving your body's gratitude for all the amazing things it's able to achieve. And your mind gratitude for being open-minded and trying something new. I hope you have an amazing Sunday night. Namaste. Thank you very much. Thank you, Claire. That was if awesome. Everyone's feeling okay. If everyone wants to unmute, unmute now, too. Feel free. Thank, Thank you, you very okay. much. That was very good. Thank you. Nice little stretch out. Yeah, it was awesome. Thank you. Oh, lovely. Nice to see you all. Hi, Kat. You're okay. Lovely. A great stretch. Just good for a Sunday night. Yes, a little bit quieter. Not my normal morning postures. Yeah, great. Thank you, Claire. Yeah, oh, it's an absolute pleasure. I hope you all have an amazing celebration of 30th. And um, have you got a virtual running club as well? Yes. The yeah. Indeed, like we have indeed. There's lots of goodies. And it's, oh, well, I'm, I'm, I don't even run. I just do yoga. But I should run, really. <laughs> There's time yet, Claire. <laughs> I know, I know. I keep promising to do your couch to 5K. <laughs> have you on it? Yeah, yeah. I thought you, you lot had the last laugh if you saw me trying to do 5K, I'm sure. <laughs>
<laughs> well, you're very good at yoga, and some of us, i.e., me, are not. So that, that's my downfall. So um, I know. You. It's just, it's just, it's just different things, isn't it? What you get into. I just yeah. obviously can't help another with yoga, sadly. Yeah. <laughs> First time for me. Thank you, Claire. Yeah. Oh, it's a pleasure. Nice. We got. We do have quite a few men come to the studio now, which is which is good. Yeah, and they're good as well. They're really good. Yeah, there are some really good ones. I mean, in fact, our, my teacher today is male. He's excellent. I bet. What she can't do, I can tell you. We've got a new one starting tomorrow as well. Very and exciting. just for everyone else, you're based in Audley Edge, aren't you, Claire? So we're... Yes, I've got a studio in Audley Edge, and this is my home studio. So um, I teach from here um, online, and I teach um, Audley Edge is, um, at the back of Costa Coffee. So if you want to come and join us, feel free. And we do, we're going to uh, launch a virtual programme from there as well. Awesome. How, how do people find out about that? Um, I'm on Instagram, so I've got Claire Broomhead Yoga on Instagram. Um, so you can, and I'm on Facebook, Claire Broomhead on Facebook. So if you message me through either of those mediums, oh, and both of mine are public, so anyone can message me or see me or whatever. That's great. And Claire, we'll do, we'll do much more through the running club as well, because I think this has been Yeah, great. yeah, well, I, I love it. I think it's great, because I think it really helps you know, working in conjunction with other things. So, um, you know, I, I, my journey to yoga was because I broke my back. So I, you know, it's helped me rehabilitate. So I think yoga is very, very useful for a lot of different purposes. So, yeah, Fantastic. good. Completely agree. Thanks, Claire. Have a lovely Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thank everyone. Yeah, have a lovely, Thank lovely, you. nice to see you all. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you, Bye. Nice Bye. to see you. Perfect.